Now, not only did Gad experience frequent raids from their neighbors, uh, neighbors like Moab and Ammon and Syria, uh, Gad, along with Reuben and half the tribe of Manasseh, they were the first tribes carried away in the captivity by the Assyrians. They were the first tribes conquered by the Assyrians and enslaved. Well, of course they were, because they're on the east side of the Jordan River. They were the first tribes that Assyria came to when they came to invade the land. They were the first ones picked off. Right? Again, there's great spiritual application for us in this. And you know people, I know people that have made a decision in the flesh. And then you see them, you know, sometime later and they're not even walking with the Lord anymore. Or, or their kids are totally spun out. They've been living on the east side of the Jordan River. Made themselves an easy target. Now, go back to chapter 49 again and let's look at our verse for today. Again, let me read it to you. Verse 19, Gad, a troop shall tramp upon him. That's what we've just looked at. But he shall triumph at last. So this, the second part of the prophecy about Gad is that they shall triumph. At last, yes, because of their decision, because they walked in the flesh and made this decision in the flesh, they end up on the east side of the Jordan River. They put themselves in a position where they were constantly tramped upon by enemy armies. But the second half of this prophecy is he shall triumph at last. Well, when did Gad triumph? I just said they were carried away into captivity by the Assyrians. So when did Gad triumph in the New Testament? In the New Testament. In the New Testament, the territory of Gad is called Gadara. It was the region of the Gadarenes. Maybe you remember that name from the Gospels. The story found in the Gospels of the demon-possessed man who lived in Gadara. Right? He lived in Gad. If you look at the map one more time, you can see that Gad stretches all the way up to the southern part of the sea of Galilee. That's Gadara in the New Testament. So let's see how they triumphed. Turn with me over to Luke chapter 8 in the New Testament. Because they triumph at last. So let's see how Luke chapter 8, verse 22. Luke 8, verse 22. It says, now it happened on a certain day that Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. Now, I want you to note here when Jesus says, let's cross over to the other side of the lake, uh, Jews at that time, they lived on the western side of the Sea of Galilee. And generally speaking, Jews did not cross over to the other side of the lake or the other side of the Sea of Galilee because the other side of the Sea of Galilee was pagan. It was an area known as the Decapolis or the Ten Roman Cities. And they were pagan cities. They were full of idolatry. They were full of uh, immorality and, and, and perversity and uncleanness of all, of all kinds. And so, uh, so the Jews didn't go over there because it was defiling. And so here, just right off the bat here on this, you know, it just so happened on a certain day, they get into the boat and they, the disciples are looking at Jesus. Where do you want to go? And Jesus says, well, let's cross over to the other side. And when Jesus says that to the, the, to the Jewish disciples, when he says, let's cross over to the other side, uh, that would have put the disciples on edge. Because we don't go over there. We're Jews. We don't go to the other side. But it says they launched out. OK, you want to go to the other side? We'll go to the other side. Verse 23, but as they sailed, Jesus fell asleep. Now, Mark's gospel tells us that he fell asleep on a pillow. So apparently he knew he was going to take a nap on this trip. He brought a pillow with him on the boat. I like that. I think that's funny to me. He also knows there's a storm that's going to come. <laughs> but he's, he's going to take a nap during the storm. 
But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And uh, and, uh, notice notice the wording here. This is where we're going to get a little Bible nerdy on you. And a windstorm came down on the lake. And they were filling with water and were in in jeopardy. Notice the windstorm came down on the lake. A cold air comes down from the north, from Mount Hermon. And there's kind of these mountain ranges that it creates kind of a tunnel or a funnel. And the cold air from the north comes down over the Sea of Galilee. And it literally just kind of drops down onto the Sea of Galilee. And the effect that that has is you can have one moment where it's very calm and smooth waters. And a few minutes later, you've got wind kicking up huge swells, huge waves. Not necessarily a, a, a thunderstorm or a tropical storm like we might have here. But just all of a sudden, this wind drops down, this cold air drops down on the Sea of Galilee, and you have these big swells of waves that come out of nowhere. I remember many years ago, I was in Israel, and when you go to the Sea of Galilee, they've got these little tour boats you can go out on and do a little cruise on the Sea of Galilee. And we're out on the Sea of Galilee, and our captain of our little boat, we were talking about this passage And he explained this phenomenon that happens there on the Sea of Galilee and these big storms that can come up, these windstorms that kick up huge waves. And I remember he said, I've actually had two boats capsize in those storms. We're in the middle of the Sea of Galilee on one of these boats with him, and he's the captain, right? Maybe share that story when we get to shore kind of thing. So they came to him in verse 24. They awoke him saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And then he arose and he rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased. And there was a calm with just a storm. It was just a word. It's interesting that Jesus can can calm a storm with just a word, isn't it? Are you going through a storm right now in your life? You know, Jesus can just speak a word and bring calm into your life. 